I wanted to talk to you about, well, one thing really, and it really is a question more than uh, a speech with answers. And the question is asking, what happened to Generation X? Generation X was cool. It was groovy. Generation X was midnight oil. It was fun. It was, it was pissed. It was crazy. It was wild. And then something happened in Generation X. Not the baby boomers, but Generation X has created the nanny state. Yeah, they even the other day had a swoop of police stopping people from jaywalking. I mean, Christ, what is going on? We can't smoke inside anymore. We can't have more than two drinks because then we're binge drinking. Two drinks and one sip. You're a binger. Arrest him. Hold him down. Come on. Make him vomit. Give him happy cack. Survive. Revive. It is out of control. Uh, you can't swear on the street anymore. Not even to yourself. You can't go, bugger. Otherwise, you will be arrested by a member of a generation that thought it was cool. Now, the last time I saw Generation X at work was in a student bar. Uh, they were drinking like there was no tomorrow, which, of course, it turns out, well, there was. They were rooting in the back of their mum's Toyota Corolla that they borrowed for the night, smoking cigarettes, smoking marijuana, snorting amyl nitrate, scoffing ecstasy tabs, uh, going gaga gangbusters on LSD. Look at the pretty traffic light. It wants me to um, go. They were climbing out of their mum's Corolla to go shag someone else after the first one, right behind the boat shed. Then they go back inside for a threesome in the men's toilets, then a foursome in the women's toilets, then back outside for a spew, a bit of a ciggy, some PK chewing gum, and then another route with some perfect stranger with absolutely no name or face that I can recall or that I told them about. But it was living and it was youth. It was youth being youth. And the world was burning, and baby boomers knew nothing, and wow, listen to this new music. It's so cool, it's so groovy, it speaks to us. When I'm a walking, I strut my stuff, then I'm so strung out, I'm high as a kite, I just might stop to check you out. Man, I love those violent femmes, which in English means violent women. Uh, and other songs, I was made for love and you, baby. Um, I know what boys like, I know what guys like, I know what boys like, boys like me. All of these songs that were saying very simple things, but mainly we are young, we are alive, the world is burning, the world is ending, we are Generation X, hear us roar. But look at what happened. Here we are, Generation X, hear them snore. Generation X, I believe, is the most conservative generation this country has ever witnessed. In the sense that they have gone backwards faster than any of the others. Sure, the baby boomers kind of wheeled things backwards, but they're still out there growing pot plants in the back. Oh, look, we thought we'd get some nice seeds out of this one. Yeah, they're having a lovely time, the boomers. They're buying their motorbikes. And then we're living again. We don't care. And occasionally we get Marjorie over once a month and have a bit of a jiggy jiggy. You know, it's, it's, they are living. But Gen X, for some reason, are carrying on as if something terrible might happen. And the thing that Generation X thinks is so terrible that just might happen is Generation Y. What is Generation X obsessed with? And I'm serious about this. I know Michael introduced me as a comedian, but I'm not here to amuse you. This stuff drives me nuts. It drives me nuts because I look at Generation Y and I see a great future, not only for this country, but for the world. All Generation X sees is Lady Gaga walking around in a bikini. It's worrying. It's a bother. All we hear from conservative talkback DJs from columnists in the age and the Herald Sun is that teenage drinking is up, teenage sex is up, teenage violence is up, beer, cigs, up. It's all the same message. 
Generation X, whether they can admit it to themselves or not, have not just become their parents, they've become their grandparents. Because Generation X's parents are baby boomers. Oh, listen, I'm, uh, what I've got is, it's a little bit of Lebanese madness in behind the Yafadistras. You know, they're doing fine. <laughs> It'd be fine if Gen X turned into the baby boomers. But they haven't. They've gone back pre-war. And they are pushing as hard as they can because you have a very highly sophisticated and media savvy generation who are supposed to be the thinkers who in fact are trying to stop the generation that is regeneration, the sexy people of Gen Y. It's an outrage. <laughs> so, I mean, let's look at the recent push to stop the so-called sexualization of the media. Have you heard that word? It's not actually a word, but it's sexualization. Uh, it's a bit like saying, uh, well, you just get any noun and you put ization next to it. There are bald people. It's the baldization <laughs> of society. Um, people are wearing more clothes in winter. It's the clothesization. Try saying that word after a couple of shandies. The foodization. Society is undergoing what I call the isationization. That if it is an isation, and isationization suggests something bad is happening, then it must be bad. If we put sex in front of it, sexualization, sexualization, well, suddenly it's, it's something bad, it's something evil, it's something wrong. I just think it's something that young people think about all the time. When did sexualizing anything become a bad thing? I can see Gen Xers out there now thinking, I don't know where this is going, but this is not going to be right. <laughs> I'm going to have difficulty with this as I drive my Renault back to Yarra. <laughs> Every day we have the male shock jocks. It's outrageous. It's a complete outrage. What is happening out there in the world? In the morning we have, you know, Mel and Kochi, and they do their shock jocking through questions. It's very clever. You watch that program, I love Mel. You watch that program, and they don't say this should stop. They say, are young people having too much sex? As opposed to what they really want to say is, young people are fucking too much. And why, didn't, why don't we get any fucking anymore? Because we're, <laughs> we're tired after making them. Now, of course, we've got the old guys on the radio. We've got, you know, Neil Mitchell and Andrew Bolt and whoever, you know, that, who's that short, angry man who I love? Stephen Price. That's a mind, a very smart guy. Um, they're pushing this message. And the question really underneath all of the message they're pushing is really quite an important one. And it is, are men sexualizing women? By that I don't mean objectifying, but is, is the whole sexualization that feminists are fearing and ranting about um, devised by men? Or are men seeing women sexualizing women? Leading uh, criticism of the raunch industry. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the raunch industry. We've been waiting years for this. But leading criticism of this industry in Australia is a woman called Melinda tankard Reese. Uh, she's a Canberra feminist. Now, that is a title that gets you each way. Canberra, <laughs> ow, feminist. <laughs> Canberra, <laughs> feminist, stop. <laughs> That's traffic you don't want to stand in the middle of. But Melinda tankard Reese, I'm sure you've heard of, is being really quite active and quite vocal on the early morning TV shows who love people coming on. You know, are young people being too sexualized? Come after the break and we'll find out. Melinda tankard Reese is the editor of uh, many things, but of the book uh, Getting Real, Challenging the Sexualization of girls, and on behalf of someone who used to be a boy, I want to thank her for her care, representation, or acknowledgement. I was being sarcastic then. <laughs> but Melinda argues that since feminism was taken out and shot by the nail-polishing, g-string-wearing apathy of a new generation of women, Gen Y, that a new sexism has emerged. 
And this is one where women are empowered, but they've used that power to become sex and the city caricatures in a way. And of course, <laughs> she's, she's quite right on, on one level. Sex and the City 2, the new film, is a monstrous, monstrous statement. Because when I saw that film, unlike most of the women in the crowd, I have to say, when I saw that film, I was outraged. And the thing that outraged me was, this is the end of feminism. Not only that, this isn't the end of feminism. This is the funeral speech. This is these four women who were supposed to be the flag bearers for an entire generation of women, now standing up and saying, we are Generation X and we frankly don't give a damn. If you haven't seen the film, stick with that. <laughs> or you'll walk out going, I mean, there are very few times in life when I, when I turn to the person next to me saying, A couple of great moments here. Carrie, Samantha, Miranda and Charlotte, all women I adored, uh, go to Abu Dhabi because they have to get out of New York because the writers can't think of anyone else to have sex with in New York. <laughs> they pack their Manolos, which are $500 shoes, and they go to Abu Dhabi, which is uh, a Muslim country. Um, they call it a religious country because they don't want to step on toes. Miranda is trying to engage with the poor Muslim people who don't understand what? Don't understand what? But so she's learning words like hello and goodbye because she's learning about the culture. <laughs> they go through this odyssey and they have sex with men. And of course, you know, they're flirting with men, they're doing this, they're doing that. Samantha goes to dinner at an Abu Dhabi restaurant looks across with pity and a little bit of scorn at a woman who's just wearing, you know, the burqa where you can just, you know, see her eyes peering out with her husband out having a nice dinner, finds it hysterical that she's eating by putting the, feet, the food under her burqa, finds it sort of outraged and scandalous. But then, after a little bit of gentle stroking by Samantha, her boyfriend stands up and because he's wearing linen, he has what could only be, a, well, a fake erection given to him by the design department of the film. <laughs> she looks across at the Muslim couple who are outraged and scandalized. And she humps. Ha! Huh, these people are so backward. But really, if you think about it, if you went to a restaurant and it was a classy restaurant, and some guy and his girlfriend turned up and they were funneling each other, and then he got up and he was walking around the restaurant going, I am what I am. <laughs> Wouldn't you say, God, that's a bit rich? Bloody hell. You know, he came out to dinner, we're paying 50 bucks for a soup here, and we got this mungo walking around going, yes, I'm erect. What, can't you handle this? <laughs> But it gets worse. You know, at, uh, towards the end, of course, they're in total crisis and they're running to the airport as fast as they can. And why? What are they scared of? Because if we don't get there in time, says Samantha, we'll have to travel coach, the other three scream, and they start rushing. Mm-hmm. On the way, of course, they have to go through the marketplace, but Samantha is inappropriately dressed pretty well. She's inappropriately dressed if she was coming round to dinner. But, of course, in this country where everybody is religious, as opposed to having a culture, she's suddenly outraged, drops her handbag, picks it up, and someone goes, oh, there are condoms. She goes, yes, condoms! And then she shouts at the people who are gathering around us, going, ooh, what? I fuck! I fuck, she says. And then she's going, mm, yeah, I fuck! <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the end of feminism. <laughs> because the only thing that that film and those four women who've made speeches on the topic many times was saying was feminism really was just there to give women sexual freedom. Everything else is irrelevant. We want Manolos, we like to look pretty, we like to spend a fortune on just a little Hermes handbag.
But the one thing feminism got was women having sex. And that's it. That's it. As a trained feminist from birth, I was screaming in outrage and I left in cold rage partly at all of the women, all of the Generation X, 40, 30-something women who were tittering, giggling and thought the whole thing was marvellous because their feminism is dead. It's gone. And they didn't know that what they just witnessed was a casket being carried past with I fuck written on it being the only thing the only message that these women, who are the, the flag bearers of their generation of women, the only thing that they had to say. It was appalling. So with that, I am with Melinda tankard Reist, because feminism is a hell of a lot more than that. Uh, and just in case you're thinking, he's a man, he's not allowed to talk about feminism, I was reading Andrea Dworkin when I was 13. Half of you are going, oh, I wonder who that is. Well, it's, you know, read her and you'll see that I'm actually a separatist feminist and none of you women should be here. <laughs> but of course, the Sex and the City women are no longer young uh, and their appeal and their relevance to younger women is about as convincing as my hairstyle is. Sort of half Hitler, half Justin Bieber, you know. <laughs> I don't know what to sing. <laughs> Melinda Tankard Reist in Opinion Online or OnlineOpinion.com says, Raunch culture is a capitalist celebration of the female sexual consumer who can choose to buy dildos, Botox, pole dancing classes, new breasts, Brazilians, surgically altered and coloured labias. I'm not touching that one. She says, this is a parody of liberation in which women become a mere participant in a mass-marketed orgy of so-called sexual freedom. I'm here to ask you, is this what you are doing, women in the audience? Is this what you're doing? Because she's talking about you. She is saying the way you dress and the way you are, you know, doing things to your body, the fact that you bought yourself a dildo, perhaps, or one that vibrates, is somehow uh, not a sign of your liberation, not a sign of your independence, not a sign of you finding your own sexual identity amongst all your other professional and family and emotional identities, your relationship identity. Are you simply embracing the idea of a parody of liberation? Are you experiencing, are you the face of a parody of liberation? Because if you are, then there is something deeply wrong. But I don't think you are. I think you're doing just fine. I think you may have a, ooh, a, a couple of things in your bedside drawer that aren't oppressing you, that aren't symbols of oppression. They're tools that are used for something else. They are not signs that you're somehow so gormlessly nitwitted that you don't understand what is being done to you by the media. I think the idea that women, particularly young women, are somehow unaware of what is going on in terms of the fashion they wear and the lifestyle they choose is not just patronising, it's something more frightening and, in fact, more powerful than patronising. It's matronising. Because who is anybody really scared of? Mum. <laughs> Dad's never around enough to really cause trouble, but mum can go at you and 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 wake up, what? At you and at you and at you and at you and at you. And I will remind you of this when you're 50. Whereas dad will go, okay, yeah, stop it, will you? Okay, cut it out. Go to bed, you kids. And matronising behaviour by women aimed at women, not at the men who run the media, is backward. And it's conservatism of the most terrifying kind because feminists are supposed to be the people who are at the vanguard of change. And in fact, they're trying to pull back the boundaries that are being pushed by a new generation of women. One of the symbols of this generation is the wonderful Lady Gaga. 
and she is enormously special. I shouldn't have thrown that away. <laughs> Lady Gaga has a film clip for a song about called Telephone and she's in a jail and she's wearing really sassy clothes and she's walking around in like a diamante black bikini for a while and she's, you know, going, sass, you and sass, you and call me and I'm not calling you and uh, I don't know, who knows what she's singing about. <laughs> but what she's doing outraged Melinda Tankard Reist. She was appalled and I'll, I can only use her words to describe this film clip because my own, you've just heard. <laughs> but Tankard Reist says, in a women's prison, Gaga gets stripped by two rugged lady guards. Her barely pixelated genitals and breasts are freeze-framed. Her boyfriend calls her, but she tells him she's kind of busy right now, then cavorts with her sexy inmates in skimpy bra and knickers. Now, some argue, she says, this is the radical bit. Well, no, it's, it's not. Uh, she went... She wants to be herself and have fun, she says, with fun with the girls and not be bothered by a man. Now, this fun includes, says Tankard Reese, watching two jailbirds fight, one kicking in the other one's head with her stilettos and punching her in the face as inmates cheer. It includes being submissive, submissive to a heavily tattooed butch lesbian. That's a bit of a judgment. And she says, I hate to spoil the, spoil the surprise, but she's in leather. In the prison yard, who touches Gaga up while pulling a mobile out of her pants, cue lingering camera shot on virgin mobile. So, the whole thing is supposed to be a male capitalist conspiracy. Has someone told Lady Gaga... Because I don't think Lady Gaga would agree. I think Lady Gaga would say, I'm being ironic and I'm using the imagery that young people are familiar with now. We've got shows like CSI, which are on prime time, where the murders are so grisly, it, I can't watch the damn thing. We have Law and Order, Special Victims Unit. The imagery on those shows is terrifying. But Lady Gaga is somehow, somehow ignorant and unaware of what she is saying, uh, is generating images with which her audience isn't familiar? I don't think so. Is she the innocent? Is she a naive bystander in her own moral car crash? I don't believe so. I believe, like Madonna, she is a ferociously smart young woman. And she's angry about things and wants to change them, and she wants to change them through shock. So she uses all the weapons at her disposal, which are just new weapons and different weapons from the ones that Generation X had when they wanted to shock, when they wanted to force change. And I don't see how Lady Gaga isn't expressing herself freely. She's saying exactly what she wants. And if it sells a few virgin mobiles, but it's funny because she's dressed like a prostitute, but her phone is a virgin. Anyone who can't see that juxtaposition as vaguely humorous and ironic is, well, not thinking about it hard enough. You upset yet? <laughs> now, of course, there are younger women who are turning against feminism. Um, and this, I think, is, is uh, a genuine worry because that means they're not reading about it. Um, and so they're not looking at the issues, some of which are ancient, some of which are new and fresh. Um, the, uh, the last 20 years has seen an enormous amount of pressure put on women in terms of work life and family life and trying to juggle all of them, while him indoors is sitting there going, yep, just a second, honey. Go, Maka, go, 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 you good thing. Yeah, yep, just a second. Men haven't changed. Women are bearing too much of the burden. But if women aren't going to be reading the books, they are disengaged not only with the movement, but with each other, and disengaged from their own connection to people who could help them, i.e. the sisters. And if you women play your cards right, your brothers. <laughs> because who don't feminists talk to? 
Who don't feminists want to hear from? Men. Who is the problem? <laughs> Until feminist thinkers get this into their head, it will just slowly flump along the way it is now. And of course, feminists want to add more distance to this gap by complaining that generation-wise women's sexual expression is just proof that they're victims of a male conspiracy to sell telephones. <laughs> and it's becoming disturbingly clear that old guard feminists have more in common and agree more with the old men of talkback radio than they do with 20-something women. Because 20-something women have switched off. Nina Fennell is a 26-year-old researcher and commentator and in the Weekly Review, an excellent newspaper, if you want to know why I walk with a stick, I suggest you read this week's edition, <laughs> says, unfortunately, many of her contemporaries still believe in the old stereotypes that feminists are angry, shrill, bra-burning, man-hating dykes. This has to be fixed. And if you women won't do it, then guys like me will start doing it. Because people will actually tune in to what I'm saying. Hey, darling, what? It's a man talking about feminism. Shh, it might be good. <laughs> because for some reason, women aren't listening to women. And you have to address that, sisters. You have to address that. Because at the moment, you have a feminist car crash. And it's got nothing to do with Lady Gaga. So, that's slanderous, so I'm not going to say that. <laughs> A big question is, why would the uni students, both male and female, of Generation Y pay attention to anyone who did everything Gen Y wants to do and more? I mean, all the Gen Xs at the moment moaning about sexualization. it just seems like Gen X jealousy, jealousy of youth, jealousy of a lifetime of independence and childcare enforced self-reliance. <coughs> That's a whole other book. Jealousy of the multimedia miasma that is found in your average iPhone. These kids today, oh, it's all machines with them. Oh, it's all music with them. Oh, it's all iPods with them. These kids today, oh, it's all culture. Culture, 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 culture. Sexualization for starters, goes way back. The birth of Venus, you seen that picture? Well, there is a naked woman. Um, at least Gaga is pixelated. <laughs> a naked woman being delivered on a shell to, well, we don't know, to us, looking pretty damn sexy. Michelangelo's David, there is an 18 foot tall naked man. And you're telling me that wasn't sexual? Michelangelo was gay. He makes an 18-foot tall naked man. with the, It's sexual. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> and as proof that everybody here is sexualized, as if you needed to be told, is that you are here and you came to see a speech that was called The Secrets of Sex. And me being here today, being called The Secrets of Sex, well... I called it that because the two most powerful words in marketing are secrets and sex. <laughs> and I thought people will come along and they'll think, oh, I'm going to see Tim Ferguson's sex secrets. <laughs> They're not secrets anymore. Just ask anybody. Claire, tell them that. It, uh, I mean, it's, 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 there's nothing to hear, really, that you haven't already. But we come along and we're intrigued. Why? Because we all love sex. We're all interested in sex. I remember from the age of seven, I fell in love with Suzanne, whatever her name was. I kissed her on the hand. I spent the next two years quivering whenever I thought of her or saw her. I didn't know what it was, but I knew I was attached to something that wanted to get attached to her. <laughs> I started sexualized. You don't become sexualized. We have a thing called DNA, and it doesn't change, and it doesn't suddenly appear. It just changes gear. So for Generation X, it seems that conservatism on all fronts is the new cool. Well, it ain't. Conservatism is the same as it always been. 
And John Howard, it might be his fault, it might be Kevin Rudd's fault, it might be Andrew Bolt's fault in the Herald Sun, it might be someone else's fault, but I think Generation X is doing what is only natural and human, which is to fear the generation coming up behind them. Because the generation coming up behind us has greater freedom, greater knowledge and greater potential than we do now that we are the older people. I'm 46. My ability to shock people is diminishing. Why? Because I don't look like Lady Gaga. But Lady Gaga is doing the same thing Madonna did and scandalised the world, which is walking around in less than you would walk around in on the street. And that's it. And sure, her mates are dressed in leather and she's in jail and they have this sort of sadomasochistic imagery, but that's because kids know about that stuff these days because they see it on the internet and they see it on CSI. So it's the same thing. We should embrace Generation Y because they are not only the future, but they're a, they're a good future. In conclusion, What I'm really trying to say is that Generation Y had the potential to be way more offensive, way more contemporarily offensive than the Doug Anthony All-Stars or I have ever been. Uh, they are more technology savvy. They are more literate. They are actually, would you believe it, more numerically literate. And they spell better, despite the fact that, you know, we're always finding letters that they can't write. They are more arts aware. They have more media and more culture in their lives than we will ever have. For the rest of our lives, we will never have as much as this generation has. They have brains, they have savvy, they have drive. So what? They only want to work for two weeks and be the general manager. That's fine. Go on. I'd rather have a nation of ambitious young people than a nation of people going, yep, right, sir, yep, no worries, yep, that's it. Or whenever you're ready to shuffle off the mortal coal, you know, I'll be right here, okay? Whenever you die, I'm happy to wait. Better that they are ambitious and pushing boundaries and causing trouble and prancing around in jail cells in bikinis than doing what Generation X wants them to, which is, is to sit down and shut up and wait your turn. If there are Gen Y people here, take us from behind with a knife. <laughs> because if we allow this tsunami of conservatism to take over, pretty soon the lights will all be off and there'll be no point for anybody to be here. So I, I urge you before I go to questions, please, when we're finished here, go home, have a double martini, smoke a cigar, get laid and watch some internet porn. For Christ's sake, I beg you. Thank you.